morning, everyone. Our opening words are titled Home. Slip into this space like a sigh. Rush into this place like the close of day. Keys dropped on the counter, bags left at the door. Detritus of life on the floor. Shrug into the room like a kid after curfew, equal parts recalcitrant and relieved. Who can say when the holy might be held among us? Humanity brushes mystery's sleeve. Static sparks chase off the chill of isolation and the light of love is revealed. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to People's Church. Whether this is your first time at People's Church or you come every Sunday or anywhere in between, I welcome you. My name is John McClellan, and I'm from the Sunday Services Committee. People's Church is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Founda Association and part of a tradition of liberal religion. Here, our mission is to become a beloved community embracing and serving our diverse world. Please join me this morning in welcoming Amy G.S.A. Brooks, who will be speaking. Amy G.S.A. Brooks is a cisgender, queer, Australian-born immigrant to the United States who loves a good cup of hot tea and hates mornings. She is a minister and the author of Another Scroll, Defiant Readings for Lectionary Year C. Most recently, she has been busy writing her second book and providing pulpit supply for progress, progre progressive congregations, both in person and in digital spaces. Amy is deeply familiar with grief and trauma. She finds truth and meaning in the liminal spaces where humanity encounters the divine. She claims kinship with her wife, Lori, as well as their adult children, assorted members of their chosen family, and numerous pets. Welcome, everyone. We have one announcement this morning. The Green Sanctuary Committee invites you to join us following the service to learn from Taylor Van Winkle, Kalamazoo County's Sustainability Coordinator, in the second in our series of Climate Conversations. We welcome the League of Women Voters of the Kalamazoo area as a co-sponsor of these events. Come to room 19 a few minutes after the service to join for a light lunch. The conversation will begin at about 12.30 p.m. Taylor will tell us about the job of the county's sustainability coordinator and talk about some of the projects being undertaken. All right, at this time, I invite you to rise and body your spirit to sing our opening song together. <laughs> There's a seed of hope in my soul, a little seed of hope in my soul. I'm gonna touch it every day, so that it grows strong on the side Then that seed of hope, so welcome in my soul. There's a seed of joy in my soul, a little seed of joy. In my soul, every day, so that it grows to the sun. Then that seed of sweet will be soon in my soul. There's a seed of peace in my soul, a little seed of peace in my soul. I'm gonna talk every day so that it grows strong all this life pray then that seed of peace soon will bloom 
in my soul. That's one love. There's a seed of love in my soul. A little seed of love in my soul. I'm going to talk every day so that it grows strong all oh, this I pray then that seed of love soon will bloom in my soul and now farmer Tom joins us with a stewardship update what you're all thinking he's back oh my god well yeah so i've been thinking this is the first week of spring easter's coming and we had a full moon last night if this isn't an auspicious time to do some planting i don't know what is so, I went and got me some seeds, and I was kind of inspired by what I heard at some of the grateful gatherings this week, uh, what people were grateful for. So, I got seeds that we can plant that'll bring to life what people are grateful for. For instance, people talked about Sunday services. And we have things like our sermons, our stories for all ages, and poetry and readings. So I'm going to plant some seeds for those things. And then what would our services be without the music? We've got our choir. We've got our bell choir, our piano accompanist our soloists. So I got some seeds for those things too. And then we have our education. A big part of this church. Every Sunday we see the children get up and go to their classes. But you know we've got adult education classes too. And we have the uh, Peace and Nature Camp which I think you'll hear about a little bit later. All things to be grateful for. And we take care of each other. Our pastoral care, we have grief support, we have counseling. If people have uh, difficult times, we have emergency support for them. So we're taking care of our own community as well. And we reach out to the greater community of Kalamazoo as well with community outreach. We're members of Isaac. We're members of the Kalamazoo Climate Crisis Coalition. We support refugees. We support loaves and fishes. We support communities and schools and many other organizations uh, with our donations and our, and our work and our efforts as individuals. And then we have our enrichment for ourselves here in the church. Things like the art wall, which is a, just a wonderful uh, changing display of creativity. Our chalice circles, our book clubs, our film club, our library, and deep discussions. So if you've been a part of one of the grateful gatherings the last few weeks, you may have mentioned one of these things, or you may have heard other people mention them. This is a rich church rich in what it offers, and rich in the support and the community we grow. 
<clears throat> so we want to do some planting this week. And we need some soil. So I got some soil too. And that's the support we get from our building and grounds, keeping up this building, uh, maintaining it from our administration, making it possible to do all those other things. <clears throat> um, I wonder if I have could have a volunteer or two to come up. Any of the children like to come up here and give me a hand? Here's one. There's two. Okay, great. So I'm going to give you each a little packet of seeds. Oh, there are three of you. Well, you can share, okay? And I want you to put it into the dirt here. Just open up that packet and dump them into the dirt. We'll mix them up real good. Okay, go ahead. There, good. There's a little more in there, I think. Okay, thank you so much for that help. So I'm going to take this home with me. And I'm going to add some water and I'm going to put it in the sun. And thank you so much. <clears throat> and we'll see what comes up. Now, there's one thing missing that I haven't mentioned here. And that's fertilizer. We need rich soil. And that's where you all come in. You may have gotten one of these in the mail or at one of your grateful gatherings or back at the table in the back of the building. But you all should have gotten a pledge packet. And uh, about 40% of our uh, goal has already been received. We'd like to have uh, the rest of it come in in a week or so. So if you haven't had a chance to give, do your pledge and provide the fertilizer, uh, please, please consider it. Um, and uh, there are a few of you who are coming to another grateful gathering this coming week. You will get your pledge packets there. If you haven't gotten it in the mail, please let us know. We will get one for you. Um, so the, uh, the deadline for for our purposes, as far as budgeting goes, is we'd like to we'd like to know how much money we're going to have in hand for the for the budget for next year. So if you can all do your best to get a pledge in before next Monday, uh, a week from tomorrow, that would be very helpful to to the finance committee for doing the budgeting. Uh, as I said, we're about 40% of the way there already, uh, and, and only about a third of the congregation has made a pledge at this point, so I think we're going to make it to our goal. Um, and as you probably will have been told, we're aiming for 15% uh, more than we have in the past in order to be able to balance our budget this coming year. So please be as generous as possible. And uh, I thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you. I'd like to call Catherine up to light the chalice.
This morning's chalice reading is Beacon of Freedom by Tracy Johnson. We kindle our chalice flame this morning, awakening the fire of our ancestors in our hearts. Beacon of freedom held out to light the way, light of reason illuminating the path, spark of courage igniting our spirits, a glow with hope for all we endeavor to do together. Holy flame of times past, right in this present moment, that we may be the love that is our center and our foundation both. Blessed be. And now I'm going to give our Zoom people a moment and I'll read out where our other chalices are lit in the community. So if you're somewhere else on Zoom, please make sure to put that in the chat box. We have a chalice lit in the Millwood neighborhood, a chalice lit on West South Street, a chalice lit in Parkview Hills, in Galesburg, on Maple Street, in Madison, Wisconsin, in Matawan, and in Paw Paw. Thank you everyone on Zoom, we are so glad you're here. Nature is cool, forest is my classroom, the earth is my school. Trees are my teachers, animals are my friends, and all this school of life depends. I love nature. Nature is cool, forest is my classroom, the earth is my school. Trees are my features, animals are my friends, and all this I love all of nature, yes, it's true. That means I love myself and I love you too. When I look around me, nature's all that I'm seeing. Plants, animals, earth, sky, and human beings. Nature is like one big community. Many animals might live inside just one tree, and that tree gives us oxygen to help us breathe. This whole interaction is called ecology. I love nature, nature is cool, forest is my room, the earth is my school. Trees are my features, animals are my friends, and all this is the love of life I love flowers, they are so pretty. I love them in the forest and I love them in the city. And I love mushrooms too, on a pizza or in salad. But my favorite place for mushrooms is right here in this love valley. I love children and I love H2O. And children who love nature can help the rivers flow by protecting habitats like wetlands and wet meadows. When we work together, we can all help nature grow. So I love nature. Nature is cold. Forest is my 
So let's love nature right now with all our hearts. That's right, this present moment is a great place to start. We don't need any money, it might take a little time. We need to open up our arms, hearts, mouths, and minds so we can see the gifts Mother Nature can bring. When we learn to appreciate it, it makes us want to sing. And when we are smiling and singing our song, other people hear us and they want to sing along. They say, I love nature. Nature is good. The forest is my classroom. The earth is my tree. Trees are my teacher. Animals are my friends. And all this love is like me. Upon this love is like me. And may the joy of life surround you wherever you may go. Go forth in peace in search of wisdom with love to guide you on your way. And may the joy surround you wherever you may go. The words for this morning's offering come from John Saxon. This religious community exists by its mission as a fire exists by burning, but a fire cannot burn without fuel. And it is the time, the energy, the imagination, the vision, the creativity, the compassion, the love, and the financial support of the members and friends of this community that fuels our mission to nurture and sustain a welcoming, inclusive, and diverse liberal religious community that transforms lives and serves the world. Your support, the free and generous support of each and every member and friend of this community is what fuels this community and its mission and without your support, the flame of justice, community, and love cannot burn brightly to warm ourselves and be a beacon in a world threatened by division and fear. The offering will now be received. Lady of the season's laughter, in the sun's warmth beneath, when the winter follows after, teach our spirits not to fear. Hold us in your steadfast lady of eternity. <laughs> Sister of the evening starlight, in the far shadow stare, 
Here among us, well of starlight, of tomorrow's dawning day, or a scene, or a steady mercy, like a returning day. Mother of the generations, in whose name is lasting celebrations, bring our labor safe to birth. Hold us in your steady mercy, laying on the turning of. God is so all times progression stand with us engage hands and hearts to end oppression writing history's fairer page hold us in your steady mercy lady of the turning edge Please join in giving thanks for all that sustains us. From the countless gifts we each have been given, gifts of life and love and sustenance, we bring these small portions to share in the works of love, which none of us can accomplish alone. Each Sunday, we take a moment to share with one another the joys and sorrows, concerns and milestones in our lives. If you're here in person, I invite you to come forward, put a stone in the bowl of water and speak briefly. For those on Zoom who would like to share, you can type your message into the chat box and I'll read it when we're done with the in-person ones. If you are here um, and you would not like to say anything, you may still come up and put a stone in the bowl of water. Or if you are on Zoom, you can just type the word stone in the chat box and we will keep you in our thoughts. Of our being and through being itself. Help us to see the miracle in the mundane, to see the crystal stars, the shape-shifting clouds, the patient trees, to see each other through fresh eyes, for it is so easy to forget, to forget what we truly are and what we've been given. As we move through our lives, let us remember to see through the mundane to the miracle beneath and to perceive that common substance that gives birth to our myriad forms, the mystery that spans beyond the edges of the universe and yet infuses our next breath. And let this foundational awareness guide us on our paths as we work towards peace and fight for justice while always informed by a spirit of compassion. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to join us in song from your seats. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gather here in the mystery of the hour. Gather here in one strong body. Gather here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw near. Gather here in the mystery of the hour. Gather here. One strong body gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw near. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour. Gathered here in the strong body gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw For the Young by Amy G.S.A. Brooks. Your body is your own. There will be those who claim they desire your beauty when in truth they lust for your youth, seeking to spread it over their aching bones as an antidote for aging. This is not a love song. Your flesh is not a sacrifice to be laid on an altar drenched by Kyriarchy's wet dreams. There is nothing sanctified or holy in the teaching that compels you to set aside your own desires and play at being merry. The sovereign one does not require this of you. Your body is your own vessel on the untamed oceans of the universe. The decision to steer it toward intimacy or abstinence, procreation or recreation is yours. Spirit offers you wind for your sails, so hope and peace and joy and love may be born within you. All right, the words for this one. Oh, good. They did give it to you. Okay. If you, <laughs> if you have harmony that belongs in this song, go ahead and put it in there. Let's go. No, 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 be such a Don't be such a I like it. Keep it coming. Don't Don't Good morning again. For anyone who has not met me yet, I am Amy. And for anyone who may be 
blind or vision impaired. I am a short, fat, white, cisgender woman with a butch haircut, wearing a dress with rainbow pockets. And I am wearing a KF94 face mask to accommodate my physical needs and as a spiritual practice. And it felt important to me as I began talking on our topic today to start with the reading that you heard that attends to the body. And maybe some of you saw the description of the message for today, and you may have had um, a, a little um, knee-jerk reaction to the word purity, and I wonder that because I myself have that reaction as someone who was brought up through a particular type of religion that attached that word and continues to attach that word to a particular approach to the performance of gender and sexuality that continues to be a noisy voice in the marketplace today. And I wanted to begin with this reading so that you all would know this is not that message. It is important to me that you know that among us and online, there are people who still carry the wounds of the messages that that voice has declared and continues to declare. And I wonder if we can, just in this space together, just have a moment to send love and healing to the survivors of the cult of purity culture and to those family members of those who sadly did not survive. Thank you. The roots of this message actually came from a conversation I had with Reverend Rachel and some other ministry colleagues where we began to discuss purity and what a Unitarian Universalist um, approach or understanding of it might even mean because we know that there are many faith traditions that have some teaching um, about a mental, a spiritual, even a physical preparation for coming into sacred space, right? So what would, what would that even look like from a Unitarian Universalist starting point, okay? Um, and, you know, as I thought about it, Obviously, the first thing I thought of was Taco Bell. <laughs> this is not an attack on Taco Bell, and it is not an endorsement for them. Honestly, as someone who um, I'm intolerant to onion, so I can eat literally nothing they sell, okay? Uh, maybe they're corn chips. That's about it. But who remembers a few years ago when someone took Taco Bell to court for their slogan, 100% beef? Show of hands. Yeah? Yeah. I want to tell you um, the thing I was just most baffled by when I heard of that court case, and that was, who thought that was true to begin with? <laughs> Who's going to Taco Bell, rocking up to the drive through window, just like dropping some pennies in the hand of the subsistence wage employee, and taking their taco and going, mm, this is probably 100% beef. This is, this is definitely just, just cow. 
Um, and maybe it's the autism speaking for me, but I couldn't understand it because to be a taco, you have to have seasonings and spices, right? So already it's not 100% beef. Um, so the whole thing, I just couldn't understand it at all. Honestly, I don't remember how the court case came out. Were Taco Bell victorious? I don't know. They seem to be doing okay. They're plucky little battlers. They're just struggling on through, making it with just the smallest amount of money possible. Still alive to this day. Way to go, Taco Bell. Um, but it got me to thinking that on the topic of purity, there are actually very few circumstances in our lives where something being in its purest form is necessary or even desirable. Okay, so... Apologies to vegetarians and vegans, but stay with me, omnivores. Would you want to eat a taco that was just plain unseasoned, 100% beef? Not so much for me. Um, and then a couple of other examples come to mind. Um, gold as an element, right, is in its purest form the most useful in terms of um, a conduit of electricity, okay? But if all of our jewellery were 100% gold, it's itself a very soft and malleable metal and it wouldn't be strong enough to stand up to day-to-day -to -day use. We like to talk about, um, you know, pure mountain spring water, but water at its purest actually doesn't taste all that great. It's the minerals of the mountain that make that mountain spring water enjoyable and refreshing. Even oxygen in the air that we breathe, if we were to breathe only oxygen, would be lethal to us. So when I think about a purity and what a, a UU approach to it might mean. I, I guess I can't get past a little bit the messages of my fundamentalist mm, Christian childhood. It's just me, I'm sure no one else. And the way this word has been co-opted by certain powerful and noisy minority voices. And so... It's, it's more helpful to me to think about it in terms of mystery and mundane. And if we think about some of the lies that we have swallowed or that people have tried to enforce upon us, I think this one is really significant. And that is the lie that there is something in the mundane that is lesser, that is unimportant, that is not worth attending to. And the lie that the work of humanity, particularly in communities like this one, is to be focused entirely upon spending 100% of our time seeking or living within mystery. Mystery and mundane. And mundane doesn't mean ordinary and it doesn't mean boring, although it can. You've all been to school. Okay, um, you've been to the nature camp with the kids and every second of that like every, every single second of your time in nature wasn't like the precipice of the mountaintop high. You know, show of hands if you are a nature lover, if you like to get outside, okay? Right, keep your hand up if you've never been outside and thought it is a bit cold, I'd rather go inside. <laughs> Keep your hand up if you've never been outside and thought, I have been rained on significantly and I would like to be dry now. 
right? The mundane is, is not without its beauty and its joy. And maybe one of the ways that we within our movement differ from some other spiritual traditions is that we treasure the mundane because it is mundane. Some of the ways that people seek to lean into mystery is, is with what we might call spiritual practices, um, with prayer, with meditation, with the movement or stillness of our body, with going out into nature and seeking wonder, with being at home with the people who are important to us and being delighted by that closeness and intimacy. And the thing about mystery that is wonderful to me is that there are times when we lean fully into it and we just encounter the mundane and that is plenty. There are sometimes we open ourselves up to mystery and we discover it together. There are some times when we are engaged in the mundane, when we're washing the breakfast dishes, taking the dog for a walk, mowing the lawn, reading, rereading a favorite novel, and we are startled to discover mystery there with us among us, between us, connecting us. Like, like being out camping on a cool, still evening and the clouds drift apart. There are no artificial lights around us and all we can see is the spark of the universe above our heads and our hearts crack open at the wonder of it all. Mystery. Wonderful mystery. Like in a gathering of people as we are that contains such rich diversity of values and beliefs and experiences and loves and losses. And to find, to be startled and surprised to discover Literally one thing we agree on. Can you imagine it? I mean, in the context of stewardship, the mundane is everyone putting in their pledge card. The mystery is when the pledges come out and you're ahead of the budget. Lean into that with me. Just imagine yourselves into that future. It's not that one is higher or more important than the other. It's just that they're different. If we're going to uh, consider again the, um, the embodiment, the flesh that we walk in, the taste of a really good meal, the touch of the hand of someone who is precious and dear. The feeling of being fully and completely comfortable with yourself, even and especially when alone. These are what we might call glimpses of heaven. 
they are more precious because they were sought out or snuck up upon us and were not enforced on us by a, um, a didactic list of rules that we have been indoctrinated in against our will. So what I'm wondering is, are we remembering to make space for the mystery? And at the same time, are we attending to the beautiful work of the mundane? And I say that as, as a people, as a collective, as People's Church of Kalamazoo, and for yourself in your life when you leave this space, in when you're with your people, when you are curled up on the couch with your fur baby, when you are attending to your potted plants, There is something that is so wonderful about this everyday, run-of-the-mill life that we live. And there is something wonderful about those precious moments when we get a glimpse of something else. That's, to me, the heart of what is beautiful about us as Unitarian Universalists, that we have the capacity to attend to and to appreciate both, to question and to interrogate some of the lies that we have received that ask us to disregard one part of the human experience and to only pay attention to the other, and vice versa. We are a people of both the mystery and the mundane. We are a people who know the taco tastes better when it is seasoned. We are a people who knows that life tastes better when we are together in the richness of our diversity, of race, of gender, of sexuality, of ability, of belief, of it all. We are a people who understand beauty wherever and however it is brought to us. And I think that is purely wonderful. Amen. to follow that. I invite you to rise in body or spirit to sing our closing song together. <laughs> There is more love somewhere. There is somewhere. I'm gonna keep on telling there is more love somewhere more hope there is more 
your heart somewhere. There is more somewhere. I'm gonna keep on there is more hope somewhere more peace there is more peace somewhere there is more peace somewhere I'm going to keep on till I find it. There is more peace somewhere. And more joy. There is more joy somewhere. There is more joy somewhere I'm gonna keep on doing there is more joy somewhere Uh, closing words are titled Mind the Gap. It is the space between the platform and the train. It's the space between the heart and the brain, between the loss and the pain, the cloud and the rain. Mind it. Be mindful of it. We are only ever one moment away from the next moment. What a fearsome responsibility to be here in the in-between, half in the now, half already in the journey, half in the dirt, half in the clouds. What a miracle to be flesh and bone and blood and to be invited into mystery, to feel the wisdom of the universe brush softly against our foreheads and within moments to be whisked away with a rushing wind, an explosion of movement brought out from beneath the ground until whatever lies beyond. <laughs>